Hello and welcome to the Mac Gamecast. This is John Carr as always, and this will not be an official episode, hence there is no episode title. This is a just short note, PSA if you will, and I wanted to wish all our listeners Happy New Year, old and new. Hope you had great holidays, whatever those were around the world. And it's just me today because the other guys and gal are unavailable. Unfortunately, our last episode was, I believe, November 30th last year. We couldn't manage to get one in in December. I'd hoped to get one out uh, before the new year. But due to work and uh, holiday travels and schedules, we couldn't uh, pull it together, unfortunately. But this is basically a we're not dead sort of uh, note. (laughs) I think I might have put one out last year. And also, uh, I am going on a three-week trip. Similar, I believe, last year I was gone. So uh, we'll be on a hiatus really until February. And then we should be able to come back and uh, have some episodes again um, for the rest of the year. More normal, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, there's definitely some fun things to talk about, especially with the Apple Vision Pro releasing in February. That'll be, uh, we'll definitely be covering that. Some high interest among the cast members. And as always, there's new stuff from Apple, whether it's uh, the latest M3 stuff, more games coming this year, like Assassin's Creed. I was going to say Brotherhood, that's the old one. Uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage. (laughs) There we go, I'm a little tired. AC Mirage is coming, for example. It's, uh, it's a big uh, big hit uh, game. Well, maybe not the biggest hit game, but it's big big on Mac, seeing as the last game we had, uh, Assassin's, Creed, Assassin's Creed game we had on Mac, was in fact AC Brotherhood, which is why that came to mind. Man, that was a long time ago. That was like 2011 or 2012 or something. So Assassin's Creed uh, returns to the Mac eventually. Yeah, that's all. Really short note. Unfortunately, I am on the run. I'm actually leaving in about uh, in a little bit over an hour <laughs> uh, on a bus to get on a plane. So I wanted to get out of note. Um, otherwise, it would be too long. Um, yeah, we'll we'll hopefully have some fun episodes, including maybe thoughts. You know, sort of a we'll do a, a delayed wrap up of last year. And uh, sort of like hopes for 2024, but that that won't happen until February. Yeah, Casper uh, did send in something. However, I may just throw it in on the end here, and uh, it was his sort of hopes and thoughts on 2024. So there will be that, uh, and you can have a listen. Otherwise, uh, be well, everyone. Hope uh, your 2024 is great, and we should be back in February with. Uh, more episodes. I believe it'd be episode uh, 46, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm pretty sure we already did 45, 46. Anyway, we're we're creeping towards 50, and hopefully on 50, uh, we have some plans for sort of a a bigger show. Uh, Maybe have uh, special guests and stuff like that. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, thanks a lot, everyone, for supporting us with your listening. We will see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hello, everyone. Casper here. Uh, Unfortunately, I can't be with the rest of the team for an end-of-year special, but I'd like to just sneak in a little greeting anyway and wish you all a happy holidays. Um, Now, 2023 is coming to an end, and as such, uh, we'll prepare for a lot more Mac Gamecasts for the next year. But uh, wrapping up the year, some of my highlights of 2023 have been, for one thing, um, the Pathfinder games. Uh, In particular, I've been playing a lot of Kingmaker, a Mac native title, a classic RPG. I've mentioned it on the podcast a few times. Most played game of the year by far, and I absolutely adore it. I'll be playing more of it in 2024, as it is a super long and detailed game that takes quite a while to get through. Um, On my list as well is to try a bit out of uh, Frostbunk out, and um, at some point dig into Baldur's Gate 3, but that's also a major um, thing, the major um, game to get to. So we'll see when I uh, when I get around to that one. But definitely uh, exciting with uh, a renewed focus on gaming on the Mac from many sides. But of course, of major note, Apple themselves focusing more on on the gaming side of things uh, for one. Uh, in particular, I think it's really cool what we're seeing with the game porting toolkit. 
and the advancements Apple themselves have made into running more games on the Mac, even if it's not fully native. And I do think that showing this kind of uh, mind share of what the, the Mac can do as a gaming platform will encourage native games over time. Of course, we have already seen a number of native games uh, shipped to Mac. Um, Lies of P, for instance, is a fairly recent example. We know Assassin's Creed is coming. Uh, Resident Evil games have been noteworthy recently and Death Stranding on the way. Um, many of which have been featured by Apple, which is, you know, not something we've been used to um, prior to 2020 when they released Apple Silicon and started pushing more into the gaming space on the on the Mac. And I think it's interesting to see what this unified, universal um, structure of things where they've started making some of these games uh, buy ones, play anywhere, including across Mac and iPhone, iPad, including the Resident Evil games. And I'm curious to see how that strategy progresses especially um, since they obviously won't do that across uh, Steam, but just the Mac App Store. Um, wondering if they'll tend more towards Mac App Store exclusives to try and encourage this universal across Apple uh, setup, or if we'll still be able to do um, more Steam uh, titles where the universal playability will be across all of Steam as a platform, across the Steam Deck, uh, Windows, Linux, and course the Mac. I would be more inclined to use the latter as I wouldn't really care to play on my iPhone or my iPad. Um, but playing on the Mac of course is of interest and potentially an Apple TV if that were to evolve into more of a game console like setup at some point. Um, who knows maybe we'll see the return of the Pippin. But I think it's a cool strategy for Apple to uh, make the Mac App Store more useful for games than it is currently by having this universal setup that could give it a competitive edge against storefronts like Epic and Steam if they want to compete on equal footing having the games be available on all the platforms, which I do hope because all of them will bring something unique at that point. But we'll see as things evolve. Um, of course, there's been a lot of interesting hardware throughout the years, uh, the year 2023 in particular. Of course, what I'm talking about, um, we got, you know, the M2 series and the M3 series this year, uh, at least part of the M2 lineup. I can't actually remember when the first M2 chip came out exactly, but um, some of the M2 chips definitely came out this year. And then, of course, the um, M3, M3 Pro and M3 Max very recently. And I look forward to more of the M3 lineup coming to fruition uh, as the following year begins. Um, we'll see, of course, the M2 and uh, M3 Ultra chip for the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. Um, and of personal interest, I'd like to see the price point that the M3 Max will sit at in the Mac Studio. Because <clears throat> that's the kind of computer that would eventually interest me, though I'm probably not going to be um, in the market for one with the M3 generation looking towards M4 or M5. So that's 2023 um, summed up in some highlight points from, from my end. I'm curious to hear what the rest of you guys think. Um, and uh, back to the team and, and looking forward to uh, a lot of good times with the Mac Gamecast in 2024. Cheers, everyone.